Why not reopen the case? It won't give you back the five years you lost, but it might give you back the most important thing in your life. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of a man called Paladin. Yes, come in. Uh, Mr. Paladin, I... Oh, where's the Paladin? You look so beautiful, all dressed up in soldier suit. Well, well. thank you, Miss Wong. I don't wish to seem immodest, but not too many years ago, I was considered quite a dashing young officer. Oh, yes, sir. Where you go all dressed up like that? Oh, I was just trying on my old uniform, Miss Wong. Oh. My old cavalry company has been invited to take part in a dedication ceremony in Lawrence, Kansas. I'm planning to go. Dedication ceremony? Mm -hmm. uh, how you mean, Mr. Paladin? Oh, well, there'll be a parade, a military band, speeches, a lot of wild oh. stories swapped among the boys who haven't seen each other in a long time. And then they plan to unveil a statue of Ulysses Grant in the public square. Mr. President of United States Grant? Yes. Uh, he was a splendid commander. I'm proud to have served under him. Oh. Mr. Paladin, I bet you prettiest soldier in whole earth. Oh, now, Miss oh, Wong. My. Drop my keys. Oh, here, I'll pick it up, Miss Wong. Ooh. Ooh. What's the matter, Mr. Paladin? It just occurred to me that maybe I'd better have Hey Boy take these trousers to the tailor and see if he can let out the waistband an inch or so. Oh, trousers shrink, Mr. Paladin? Uh, well, yes, uh, perhaps that's it. You know, folks, a good, thick, barbecued steak on your table is the finest compliment you can pay your guests. That's why when you've got the best meat there is, it's important to get the best flavor out of it. May I recommend using French's Worcestershire in your barbecue sauce? You see, French's Worcestershire has 15 different spices and other ingredients blended into it. Not two or three measly old things, but 15. This French's Worcestershire recipe of spices and other ingredients, when added to your own hot or sweet barbecue sauce, brings out every last bit of the wonderful juicy flavor in food, where you can barely keep your mouth from watering. See the difference French's Worcestershire makes in your barbecue sauce. Send for this special offer. Get 12 delicious new barbecue sauce recipes. Just write barbecue book, box 5-6, that's box 5-6, Rochester, New York. I arrived in Lawrence, Kansas, the day before the ceremonies. The town was crowded, and the streets were festive with red, white, and blue bunting. I checked into a hotel, registered with a parade committee, then wandered around a bit. In the Buckhorn Saloon, I ran into Todd Clum. Todd had joined my outfit as a volunteer, already a veteran of the Mexican War. The last time I had seen him, he had been scouting for Custer. He was a fine soldier, good friend, and a very wise old man. Head, dog, uh, gone and luck. Well, some days are better than others, Todd. Hey, barkeep, the bottle here, I'm buying again. Yes, you've been mighty hospitable today, Todd. <laughs> now, Paladin, just you don't you mention it. It's been a pleasure. Yes, sir, a real pleasure. But I'll get you yet. Yeah. Hey, the town is certainly filling up. Yes, sir. Reeve Bob's going to be quite a dude this year, Shindig. Hey, Paladin. Huh? At the end of the bar, that fellow, he's about to stare a hole plumb through you. Somebody you know? Where? Which one, Tom? Well, that one there, heading for the door. Hey, that's... Oh, good Lord, that's Billy Bedlow. Excuse me a minute, Todd. Why, sure. Billy! Bedlow! Billy Bedlow, wait, wait. Billy! Well, am I glad to see you. Hello, Paladin. Billy, it's been a long time. Yes, it has. Well, 
I was just on my way, pal. No, the... wait. I want to buy you a drink. Have you meet an old friend of mine? No, no, thanks. Some other time, pal. What's the matter? You got to go polish up all that brass for the parade? No. Don't tell me you career soldiers have gotten careless about the spit and polish. Let me see now. What is it? At least Lieutenant Colonel Bedlow, I suppose. No, it's Mr. Bedlow. Mr.? You mean that you have given up the army? Look, Paladin, I have to go. Hey, and you are the only dedicated soldier I've ever known. I can imagine you as anything but an army man. What have you been doing, Billy? Five years. Huh? In Leavenworth Military Prison. Now may I go? Oh, Billy, I... I'm sorry. I... Well, I don't suppose you want to tell me about it. So long, Paladin. Your friends seem to be in a mite of a hurry to get. Uh, oh, Paladin, uh, yeah. you, you want to take a little walk with me? i got to get on down to the liver and get saddled up. i, I got an errand to do. Yeah, short time. Your friend an army man? He'll always be an army man. You'll be back for the parade, won't you, Todd? Oh, sure, Paladin. I'll be back. I just got to ride over and see a fella. Now, first I, first I hold still, doggone it. Let me get this here blanket over here. Now, it seems to me that horse is about due for trading, Todd. Now, oh, see here, I'm fond of Bertha. She's been a dang good horse for a dang long time. Too dang long. <laughs> oh, now look what you did. That's no kind of a remark to make right out where a female can hear it. <laughs> For a fella supposed to have a way with the ladies, you don't act very smart. Now, there, Bertha, there, dearie, calm down. Uh, say, uh, Paladin, that fella you ran into in the bar. Yeah? He uh, looking for someone? What do you mean? Oh, I recollect seeing him around town here this past week. And, well, I don't know, it's, it's, it's something you, you kind of feel when a, when a man's on the hunt for another man. What are you talking about, Todd? Ah, I say your friend's out to get somebody. Looking for to kill him. All right, dearie, all right. Now the saddle. Oh, oh wait a minute, Todd, let me do it for you. Ah, my back. Thanks. Uh, easy going. Oh, no. Oh. Uh, there. You, you better let me cinch her up. She won't stand still for nobody else. All right. <laughs> Looks like she doesn't intend to stand still for you either. Yeah, no, 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 no. She'll be all right. Todd, how do you figure a man? Well, you don't. If you're caught into a man, you ride with him, drink with him, palaver with him. You ride proud, your trails cross. If you and a man don't seem to hit it off, you leave him alone. Whoa there, Bertha. Whoa, now, now. Oh, she hates to have that cinch too tight now. Ah, you leave a man alone unless he comes around pesticating. Then you deal with him anyway that seems fit to the occasion. But you don't try to figure a man. Take him or leave him. You got no right to do anything else. Now, Bertha! That horse is a real mean look, Todd. You better watch oh, her. Oh, this here's a good animal. Even the best critter can go bad. Well, uh, ah, there we are. Ah, this fella, he's a... Uh, you a good friend of yours? Well, Bedlow and I received our appointments to West Point at the same time. We went through the academy together. We shared a room, our money, our clothes, even our girls. Oh, like that, huh? He even saved my life at Shiloh at great risk to his own. Hmm. Yes, yes. He is a good friend of mine. Well, then, Paladin, why don't you just go have a little powwow with him? <laughs> Smoking 
more these days, but enjoying it less, change to Camels. The Camel blend of costly tobaccos has never been equal for real smoking satisfaction. Have a real cigarette. Have a Camel! Start to really enjoy smoking again. Hello, Billy. How did you find me? Well, it wasn't easy. Uh, may I come in? Of course. Sit down. <laughs> I, uh, I'm afraid I was rude this afternoon. No, that's all right. Billy, are you gunning for somebody? You never were one to waste time in getting to a point. Are you? Well, now, who gave you that idea? A wise old man. Oh. Well, I'm going to kill three men before this weekend is over. That's not very smart. Why? They'll be here for the dedication. The judge advocate and the two witnesses at my court's martial. When I see them, I'll kill them. What will that gain you? Revenge. What's the matter with you, Billy? You're not talking like the soldier I knew. I'm not the soldier you knew. Well, what's the matter? At your court's martial? Never mind the charge. You you feel you didn't get a fair trial? I know I didn't get a fair trial. Well, then let's investigate it. Reopen the case. It won't get you back your five years, Billy, but it may get back the most important thing in your life. The army. Oh, now, Paladin, no, don't you see? I'll never get back the army. Nothing can ever change what's happened. The army was my home, my life. Those men with their lies desecrated my home, and they disgraced my life. But they, my brother officers, after all, were only the army in action. So what it amounts to is that the army itself turned on me. Now nothing will ever change that and nothing can ever make it right again. Billy, why don't you come out to California with me? I think you need a change. You think I'm loony, don't you? You talk a little loony. Well, that's just because you don't understand. It's not the five years I spent in prison, bad as they were. It's all the years I gave to a... a, a a delusion. Oh, stop talking nonsense, Billy. What you need is to find out that there's a great big world out there that doesn't give a hoot about your particular personal problems. Follow me around for a while. The three men, they're only symbols, of course. But through them, I'm going to have my revenge. <laughs> Billy, I owe you a lot. Maybe I can repay you this way. I hate to ask you to do this, Todd. I stayed there with him as long as I could, but there's no way I can get out of this parade now. Oh, I'm glad to oblige. You got him tied up. Huh? Yeah, yeah, he is trussed up tight. He is pretty peeved about it, but I had to do it for his sake. Sure you did. If I can keep him there until tomorrow when this is over, maybe I can talk a little sense into him. Uh-huh. I just stand guard duty, is that it? Yeah, just keep him company, see if he gets some food. Or a drink if he wants it. Yeah? If he seems to have settled down, you can release his hands. And I'll get over there as soon as I can. All right, I'll take care of it, Paladin. He'll thank you for this as soon as he thinks it over. Well, I hope so. Well, I guess we're about ready to start. Yeah, I I I'll see you after, Paladin. Yeah. Right, Todd, thanks. Who now? <laughs> Up and eight. Good. At ten. Ten. Repair the mount. Repair the mount. Mount. Call him a four. Forward. How?
I led my company along the parade route to the town square and to our assigned position at the left of the reviewing stand. The platform was loaded with brass. I counted a two-star general, three brigadier generals, and an assortment of colonels. We sat our horses at ease as the afternoon wore on with drills, speeches, local talent, then more drills, more speeches. I couldn't keep my mind off Billy Bedlow. Hey, Paladin, Paladin. Hey, Todd, yeah, what is it? Can you fall out? No, not very well. You got to. We get trouble? Yes, sir, Bob. Well, look, I'm pretty conspicuous here. Oh, ain't nobody going to see all that brass up there. has got them blinded. All right, I'll meet you behind the reviewing stand. Right. Get at Todd, what happened? Your head. I got clobbered with the barrel of a peacemaker. You what? Your friend. Billy? Yeah. Him and me got real chummy. He was talking a lot of good horse sense. Well, it seemed like leastways. So, like you said, I untied his hands. We was having a game of cribbage. And then pretty soon he ain't talking horse sense at all. He ain't making any kind of sense. Now, you see, he's got this here pistol hidden under a pillar. Well, the next thing I know, I'm waking up and my head's hurting and he's gone. Bedlow's on the loose? Yeah, and let me tell you something, Paladin. That fella's crazier than a coot. He sure is, and he's dangerous. The men he's after on the reviewing stand here. He must have headed this way. Well, how'd we ever find him in this crowd? I don't know, but come on. We'll stand guard by the corner of the platform. We're lucky it's almost over. They're getting ready to stand retreat. Yeah, they're rolling out the town cannon. Paladin Rook, the officer in charge of that cannon detail. That's Billy. Got himself rigged up in his uniform. Oh, no. He's ordering that cannon pointed this way, right toward the reviewing stand. Todd, the committee had that cannon all primed and ready to go, loaded with blanks. Now, do you realize that in the confusion around here today, Billy could very well have reloaded it with real cannonball? We're getting ready to lower the flag. They'll be firing that dang thing pretty soon. I'm getting out of here. He is insane, Todd. You better join me. No, I gotta stop him. Billy. Major Bedlow, sir. Yes, Captain? May I speak to you in private, Major? I'm afraid your request is out of order, Captain. We're preparing the sound retreat. Prepare to fire. Don't fire that thing. Now, Paladin, don't interfere. Stop it, Billy. Stand back. Billy. I'm wearing sidearms, Paladin. You come one step closer, I'll shoot. You shoot me, Billy? Yes, you. Thank you. And now, here are Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. Bergen, why did you stop the car here? I want to talk to that farmer. Oh, mister. Oh, you call me? Why, it's Mortimer Snurd. Oh, where, where? Oh, that's me. (laughs) Are there any General Motors dealers around here? Uh, No, no. No, but we got some Chevrolet, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, Buick, and Cadillac dealers, though. And some Chevy and GMC truck dealers, too. (laughs) Well, Mortimer, those are all General Motors dealers. Oh, well, what do you want to see them all for? Well, I only want to see one for guardian maintenance. Do they make that car, too? No, <laughs> no that's a service that's available only at General Motors dealer service departments. Oh, I see. Yes, and right now they're featuring complete lubrications, quality appearance services, brake adjustments, and front-end inspections. It's quality work performed by GM trained servicemen at a fair price. Well, that makes good sense even to me. <laughs> I tell you, Paladin, it was just like Gettysburg all over again, the way the shots were flying. They had to do it. They had to bring him down. He was just gone plumb loco. Poor Billy. Hey, you know, you was lucky. You only got that nick in your shoulder in close range like that. I know. I'm glad there weren't any other casualties. I never seen a man act like that, just firing wild. Like he was trying to exterminate the whole army with them guns of his. Well, his poor, sick mind had to find an enemy. <sighs> well, I reckon I better be riding off. Say, you leaving for San Francisco today? Yeah. Mm, I know you feel pretty bad about your friend Paladin. I'm, I'm not sorry about it. Thanks, Todd. Hey, 
Isn't that a new horse you've got there? Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's real sad about that old horse of mine. Just went ornery mean, plum bad. We had to, well, you, you said it. You said even the best critter can go bad. Not say much, Miss Paladin. Uh, I'm tired, hey boy. You have long, hard trip on stagecoach? Yeah, that's partly it. Oh, it's good to be back in my own room again. Yes, sir. I unpack your suitcase and I let you get some sleep. Thanks, hey boy, but I'd rather get cleaned up and go down to the bar. It's too late in the afternoon to take a nap. Oh, good idea. Uh, you forget to be tired when you're with people in bar. Hey, my, the shoes are plenty fancy uniform. Uh, you want here, boy, to hang it in closet? No, you better pack it up in mothballs. Store it in the basement. Oh, oh, Miss Apollo, I uh, look like it's too late for mothballs. A uh, suit already a big hole in sleeve. That's a bullet hole. Bullet hole? Oh, my, who shoot bullet in suit, Mr. Paladin? Friend of mine. Friend? He not much good a friend to do that. Wasn't really himself when he did it, hey boy. He had a lot of problems in his mind. But even so, I'll always remember him as a friend. Next time you refresh, enjoy a frosty, ice-cold Pepsi-Cola. Sociability, Charlie. All right, Kay, how's this? Pepsi is light, refreshes without filling. You like to refresh? Have a Pepsi right now. Well, offer it to everybody, Charlie. I will. Enjoy Pepsi at the fountain. It's delicious at home, too. Have one at lunch or with a snack. Charlie. At the beach or at dinner. Wherever you go, wherever you're thirsty, Pepsi is there. It's here, too, in our Be Sociable song. Be sociable, look smart, keep up to date with Pepsi. Drink light, refreshing Pepsi. Stay young and fair and debonair. Be sociable, have a Pepsi. For the weekend, have plenty of Pepsi around. Pick up an extra carton today. CK, I'm sociable. With Pepsi... Everyone is. Have Gun, Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Roth, he is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Paris and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hayboy and Virginia Gregg as Miss Wong. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun, Will Travel by Ann Dowd. Featured in the cast were Joseph Kearns, Barney Phillips, and Vic Perrin. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel.